Hey guys, a warm welcome back to the channel. When hunting for that special car, it doesn't always have to be a million dollar Ferrari F40. The car's value is not the limiting factor to the level of excitement you can achieve. Often discovering that hidden gem, that something special, gives you that same warm buzz inside. This Testarossa was exactly that. It's the cheapest Ferrari I've bought by far, yet it's been the most rewarding. Today, I'm gonna to tell you all about the story of how this car came to be in my possession, this 80s icon, the challenges we had building this one. But before I do that, I need to just sort something out here. There's something not quite right, so give me a second. That's better. You see, when you're in the presence of an 80s icon, one must dress appropriately. And the Testarossa was the car icon of the 80s. It was on every schoolboy's bedroom wall alongside the Lamborghini Contash. This car oozes 80s from its rear wide end to these very 80s side slats. You look at this car and you think 80s. It sits there along other 80s legends such as Madonna, Prince, and even Michael Jackson. A little known fact about Michael Jackson is he drove a Testarossa Spider in a very famous 80s Pepsi advert. But before I tell you the story on this car, I want to rewind a little and tell you how the Testarossa sparked something that gave me a lifelong passion for Ferrari cars. Two things happened back in the 80s. Firstly, an arcade game came out called OutRun. Like many others, I was obsessed with OutRun and then to top it off, a TV show came out that would alter my universe forever. Three hundred and forty horsepower, one hundred and eighty miles an hour. New paint, new rubber. Absolutely essential for any type of serious police work, huh? That's that right. So there you have it, that is the backstory on how my obsession for Ferrari cars all began. Let me tell you about the story on this one. Let's get it out of the garage and have a little look around it. And this is it, the 1987 Ferrari Testarossa. It's now a Spider, affectionately known as Ratarossa. Let's give you a tour of the car and tell you how it came to be the world's only rat look Ferrari. Now, Ferrari only ever made one very, very special Testarossa Spider. That was for Gianni Agnelli, who was the boss of Fiat at the time. So they built that as a special car for him. All other Testarossas were a coupe, a hardtop car. So let's talk about how this car came to be in its current state. Five years ago, I bought a stunning red Testarossa. I picked the car up from Holland and had a fantastic drive all the way through Europe back to the UK. The car didn't miss a beat. Not long after, I was cleaning the car and noticed I had a bit missing in the engine. I jumped on the internet to try and find a replacement, but instead my search brought up this, the Ratarossa. It was an advert on a kit car forum. At first I dismissed it as just another Pontiac Fiero with a kit. However, on close inspection, I noticed it was a genuine Ferrari Testarossa. And not only that, 
it was also complete with its factory 4.9 litre flat 12 engine and gearbox. It looked in a very sorry state. Someone had clearly taken a hacksaw and chopped off the roof. It had no floors at the front and it was just a pile of bits. But the more I thought about it, the more the project excited me. Had I found that diamond in the rough? The other appealing thing about this car was the price. It was cheap, very cheap. The advert was three years old and in that time frame, Testarossas had rocketed in price. Eventually, I managed to get hold of the owner in California and unsurprisingly, he still had this very unfinished project sat at the back of his garage. We spoke at length and I got him to lay out all of the parts that he had and send me pics. I then detailed each of those and became a Testarossa guru on parts overnight. I explained to him that anyone else who bought his Testarossa would simply break it for parts, but that if I purchased it, I promised him that I would do my very best to put that car back on the road where it belonged and where it hadn't been for over 20 years. We struck a deal, sight unseen, I bought the car on pictures alone and had it shipped all the way over across the pond to the UK. Upon arrival, we stumbled upon our first problem. The shipping company had lost the Testarossa's keys. Not a cheap or easy issue to fix. The key set cost a ridiculous amount of money and instead of replacing the keys, the shipping company did a deal and said that instead they would ship a free car over from the States. Well, not only did I have to replace the key set, but I also ended up buying another Ferrari, a 308, and that got shipped free of charge, but it still cost me a lot of money. Anyway, that's a story for another day. I kept the red 1990 Testarossa for a while and used it as a blueprint to help build Rattarossa. I used it for the wiring, to trace parts, find locations. The car, when it arrived in the UK, came with two massive crates of parts, so it took me a while to figure out where everything went. I estimate about 90% of the parts required to finish the project came with it. The rest needed to be sourced from around the world. Fur parts and suit performance were great at getting those missing items and helping with the kits required to refurbish some of the older stuff. With the help of Ferrari Forum members, we managed to get the Testarossa fired up relatively quickly and out for its first drive in over two decades. I faced many problems on the project and documented them all online. During the build, the car featured in many magazines and numerous websites. Matt Farrer from The Smoking Tire flew over to the UK to film a one take and write an article for the drive. I had just finished fitting a set of coilover adjustable suspension shocks to the car. And I'll explain why I needed to do that in a little bit. But during that first drive out with Matt, we had a funny moment that you simply couldn't have timed any better. It actually has sort of a nice ride. It, it sort of floats a bit. Yeah. Probably a nice road tripper. This, uh, so I'm on my third set of springs. I've been trying to get that suspension ride uh, correct. Ah! As you can see, I haven't quite got it right. Ah, what was all those things that just happened? That was so many wrong things at once! Maybe I've got a bit low on the front. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. <laughs> well, there's your there's your yeehaw moment. There's my yeehaw. They I, were fresh new tires. I haven't got much tread on those now, yeah? Bro. <laughs> I've had a lot of fun filming with the car and on those photo shoots. It's been a great, fantastic build and a lot of fun. The project, though, is not actually finished. Let's have a quick look around the car and I'll show you some of the things that still need to be done. Now there are two questions that everyone asks me about the Rattarossa. The first one is, when are you gonna finish it? And the second one is, what color are you gonna paint it? Now my answer to that is externally, the car is finished. We're gonna be changing uh, some stuff in the engine, I'll explain. Interior is staying the same. 
And color-wise, again, this is it. This is the final version as far as I'm concerned. But let me give you a tour around the car, show you some of the reasons why I answer in that way. And you tell me, should I finish this car? Should I put some more into the uh, bodywork? And should I paint it? And if so, what color do you think I should be painting this one? Rattarossa is a 1987 model Testarossa. You can tell that because throughout the years, Ferrari changed the design of the car very slightly. The original cars from 84 came with a high level single mounted mirror up on the post here. There's a few cars that came with dual, but majority always had the single uh, mirror up here. That was combined with center lock hub wheels. Then in 87, they changed the design. They no longer needed the high level mirror and they changed it to a dual normal level mirror like this. And again, combined with the center lock hubs. This happens to be my favorite combo. I like the aesthetics of this car with the dual mirrors and the set, uh, center lock hubs. I love those. I think they are brilliant. Again, they changed the design in 88, kept the mirrors, but they changed the uh, wheels to a five stud pattern. They lost this, the, that beautiful center uh, lock and they went to a design pattern like most normal cars, a five stud. Just noticed I've got a bit of a flat tire there on the uh, Stradale. But uh, like I say, this happens to be my uh, personal favorite. So let's lift up the lid and give you a tour of the money shot on this Testarossa. So we've got these race style latches here and that is because, oh, there we go. The engine lid hinges in the opposite way that it did when it came from factory. Now we have this very expensive little brace here to hold it in place. Would normally be carbon fiber. So let's talk about the engine. So we have a 4.9 liter flat 12, 380 brake horsepower engine that was capable of taking this car up to 180 mile an hour, 35 years ago in the mid eighties. This car was no slouch. Even the supercars of today don't go that much quicker. And trust me, this compared to something like the Stradale, it still can hold its own. The engine on Rattarossa is pretty much the same standard format that this car came out of the Maranello factory in Italy back in the 80s with. There's a few subtle differences with this. Number one, the frame here would normally extend up and that would house our roof structure. That was chopped uh, to create the convertible look. We have no aircon still on the car. Again, that's something I have really struggled with with this because pipes were cut and uh, getting hold of those pipes are extremely expensive. But it would be something nice, not that I really need it with no roof system on this car, but it would be nice just to get it back to standard format. We've got a couple of little panels missing, little hatch over here over the, uh, the transmission, the bell housing. Uh, we've obviously got the lid little bits here that we explained. We've got over here <laughs> a lovely style um, door hinge latching this hood here. <laughs> The other thing that needed to be changed and rehoused on Rattarossa was the fuel filler cap here. Normally it would sit somewhere around there in the engine lid, but we had to change that obviously. So this is actually false at the moment. We have all the box behind it, but I still have to lift the lid each time and fill it down here, which is not great. So I normally put a bit of a uh, cloth underneath because we've got all our exhaust system down there. Uh, and also I've labeled it fuel because this is oil and this is fuel, but that needs to be changed and uh, tucked in under here and connected up to uh, that at some point. And, uh, and then we've got uh, a couple of other changes that I have made to this engine because it really needed a little bit of an upgrade. The major change engine wise on Rattarossa is all to do with the exhaust system. Now Testarossa's in standard form sound a little bit disappointing. There is no real grunt to them. And that was one of the things I really wanted to change on this car. Now it happened that I had a spare sports exhaust muffler, the back box for a Testarossa 
sitting in the garage from my old Testarossa, uh, which was a Euro car. Now this one being a US car, I soon figured out that the exhaust system is completely different. So nothing is easy. We had to fabricate, we used the sports box from the Euro car, and then we fabricated some straight through pipes and mated everything together. And the result, well, the result is pretty spectacular noise-wise. The Stradale is one of the best sounding cars to ever come out of Marinello factory. But I will say that this is not far off. Let's jump inside and take a look at the interior of Rattarossa. I forgot that doesn't work. So there we go. Kind of, we've still got that patina. I guess it's beyond patina, this car really. Uh, but we've got, you know, wear on the seats. We've got tears on the seats down there as well. We've got the embossed headrests. But I love it. I want to keep it in the state. Uh, look at the steering wheel. Look at the wear on that. It just shows how old this is. Really, uh, I love this kind of feature on this car. There are a couple of little things that I still need to uh, finish on this, but it definitely is not going to get all uh, fixed up. The one thing that I did change on this car was the dashboard. The dashboard was really wrecked. And I managed to find a brand new off the shelf 1980s dashboard for the Testarossa in the correct color that this came from, from factory. And I paid 150 pound for that delivered. The retail price of it was over 5,000 pound. It was brand new, the whole thing. While I was building this, one of the upgrades that I did actually put on this car, let's give it some power, was underneath this hidden flap, which I wasn't too worried about, but we used a genuine, Ferrari head unit from a 430 Scuderia. And this is the only Testarossa with built-in sat-nav that works. <laughs> we have our very 80s looking interior. All of this is totally standard Testarossa. Let's open the glove box. Let's move Ratty out the way. Stay up there, Ratty. Look at this, we've even got a vanity mirror in there. How cool is that? Ashtrays in the uh, door handles here. Lighter. Everything works on here apart from the air conditioning. There's some very 80s style air vents in the Testarossa along with these pop-up ones that were all used in uh, Ferraris of that era. The bit I need to uh, get hold of is this pocket here and the cover for the ashtray, which is missing and very hard to get hold of. They don't make things like that anymore. So uh, as you can see on this side, we've got our cover and our pocket that holds. Look at that. We've got some driving gloves to match the car. A couple of other details on the interior of the car is we reused all the old headlining to create some of these bits here. The roof's obviously missing, so we had to, uh, I did a really bad job of uh, creating all of this on here. Um, we used the luggage straps again, but we had to uh, reposition those because we missed the uh, old parcel shelf up here. And then again, the final thing is we changed the seat belts to red to match some of the uh, red flares around the car. Let's take a look up front on the car. So on the Testarossa, you actually get quite a decent bit of storage. What have we got here? So we've got our special tool to get the uh, center lock wheels off the car which are extremely tight on there so we have to carry that just in case we have uh, any problems we have the obligatory ferrari fire extinguisher that uh, you trust me you need to carry we have a uh, testarossa toolkit with uh, look at this ferrari labeled screwdrivers we have a jack kit and a spare bulb kit there and then the cool thing with this one is under here we have an original testarossa spare wheel never been used how cool is that 
One of the other design upgrades that needed to happen to Rattarossa was all to do with the fact that we lost the original roof. Now in coupe form, that gave the Testarossa all of its structural rigidity. And without it, the middle of the car would just simply flex around. So in order to combat that, on this car, it's had some strengthening bars welded in place. We've got these big scaffolding style bars here that weld from the front over here all the way through up into the back section. And it's done a pretty good job of keeping this car quite rigid. It's not as rigid as the coupe, but it's not bad at all. Now, the only downside of that is when I got the car, that had all been done already, but what happened because of it, we added extra weight into that mid section of the car and it meant the front of this car rose up. So it looked like it was pointing sky with the front of this car, it looked ridiculous. So the only way we can combat that because the car and its suspension system were all kind of preset at a certain height from factory, we had to upgrade the uh, shocks on this and put coilovers on it so we could get it slightly down, which as you saw at the beginning of the video, hasn't quite got uh, its perfect setting at the moment. It bounces around a little bit and uh, it can be a bit joyous on the odd bump in the road every now and again. One of the issues is it would cost so much money to put this car perfect. The car would never be worth that kind of value that would have to be invested. And I quite like it as it is. You know, if you look at some of these problems, nothing fits right. This hasn't been done perfectly. We've got marks everywhere on the car. You know, things such as the door gaps, you know, there's a big, big <laughs> difference there. The pins, look how bad all of that is. It would all have to be re reworked. All of the interior would have to be redone. Things like this. We've got gaps everywhere. We've got Paintwork needs to be done. The whole car would have to be painted. Even things like, you know, gaps at the front, all of this would have to be redone. We've got cracking where it's been bondoed and uh, filled over the time. But you get the general idea. It would cost so much to make this car look perfect. And the fact that it didn't come as a convertible from the factory is always going to devalue a Ferrari. So for me, I'm really happy to have fun with this car and enjoy it as it is. And there you go guys, that is the story on Rattarossa, how I acquired it, why I built it, and all of that fun was just £16,000. That was the price of the car, the shipping over from the States, plus all of the taxes. You can't even buy a second-hand gearbox for the price of that on a Testarossa. The only issue with this car, being in the UK is we have no roof on here and we can never guarantee the weather here. So at some point, what I'm gonna be trying to do is put maybe a convertible system and hide it under here or have a removable roof. Uh, we could cast that maybe out of uh, the original shape of the Testarossa and build it out of carbon fiber. Anyway, guys, if you've got any uh, better suggestions, write them in the comments below. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a good old thumbs up. It really does help with the YouTube algorithm. In the meantime, if you want to check my uh, Instagram channel, where I post a lot of stuff on a daily basis about what goes on in Rattarossa's garage, go and check that one out. Anyway, guys, until the next time, thank you very much for watching. I will see you again very shortly. Ciao for now.